Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the spline tool in Fusion and why you should be using it to take your transitions and effects to the next level. Let's get into it. So if you don't know who I am guys, my name is Ed, I'm Melbourne Bidet. Don't know who I am guys, my name is Ed, I'm Melbourne Bidet. So if you don't know who I am, guys, my name is Ed O. Melbourne Taste for... Oh, God, I'm not just not saying that today. It's a little bit... Oh, no. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ed. I'm a Melbourne-based photographer and videographer. Currently in stage four lockdown in Melbourne, which sucks a bit, but it's given me a lot of time to scrub up on a couple of skills that we'll be going through today. Now, why do we use this spline tool? Basically, guys, the long and short of it is it gives you so much control and so much more polish to your transitions. For me, it's like getting a drag and drop transition chucking on versus someone doing a really polished, perfectly executed transition. For most people, when they're going through their videography journey, they start off editing in the edit tab for all your basic sort of stuff. And then you want to get cooler footage, cool transitions and all that sort of stuff comes from the more advanced editing programs like your After Effects or like we're doing today, like Infusion. A little bit confusing and they're a little bit hard to pull off sometimes. I know when I first looked at Fusion, I was like, what the hell is going on here? This is like a jungle. But once you get your head around it, you can create some really cool effects. And one of the biggest tools in Fusion that actually helps you sell effects is the spline tool. It gives you so much control over your transitions, what you're doing with them, how they react, the time that it takes, the speed ramping in them. It just makes such a massive difference. What we'll do today, guys, to demonstrate this, take you through a transition and show you what it looks like without utilizing the spline tool and what it does look like utilizing the spline tool. And you'll see why it gives you so much more control. There's a stark difference between just a drag and drop transition and a transition that is custom tailored for that clip that you are using. And it's one of the few things that you can do to really up your game as a videographer or editor to really grab people's attention, keep them immersed for longer, keep eyes glued on those pieces because it is so fluid and it's so nice and so smooth that you can really create awesome, awesome pieces with it. So it is a very, very good tool to use. So what we're gonna do guys, we'll jump to Fusion and I'll take you through it and show you how to manipulate the spline tool and how we can use it and a couple of different functionalities it have. So we've got these two clips set up. Let's jump into it and get editing. All right, confession. I may have recorded this whole segment and forgot to press the screen recorder. So I kind of fucked up and my bad. Yeah, I went to edit it this morning and uh, I went to find the screen recorder file and I couldn't and I was like, Ed, you absolute piece of shit. So that is why the lighting is a bit different. The jumper is different. Things are different because I suck. I'm a piece of shit. So my bad guys, but let's get into it. All right, my friends. So we have finally got DaVinci Resolve open. So we have this really simple clip of that I've done for a client recently, which is just this knife here cutting these fudges and then swiping across to reveal them cut in half nice and clean just so that show they are absolutely delicious something a little bit more engaging this is a product photography video i did for a client and i actually built most of the foundation of the video through fusion creating awesome effects one of the segments i brushed over was the spline tool today we're going to take a little bit more of a deep dive explain what it is and why we need to be using it so when i'm looking at this clip what I wanted to do is I wanted to do a sort of rotation punched in effect that created just a little bit of dynamic movement. I just find locked off tripod shots so boring. So when I look at this, I'm like, yeah, cool. I could use a speed ramp. I could use something like that, but I don't, that just wasn't calling out to me. So I thought I'll do this warp transition. So what I did, built it from this power from the ground up. So what we're gonna do is do a transform node, add that in, and then I'm gonna add some directional Directional blur, just because it makes transition sexy. What we'll do is go to our transform node. I'm gonna find the start here, right about there. Size, and then we'll go to the end of the transition. Make that a two. And what I wanted to do is that rotation as well. So at the same point, do angle keyframe, back to the same second keyframe and do 360. So now when we watch this through, you're gonna see a really shit transition as we go round and it just does not look good at all. Let's add in some of that directional blur there. Well, just to get as close as what you do without using the spline tool at all. We'll just 
is what we'll do. Let's keyframe that in, go few in. Do this how I would actually do it. So here's what the transition would look like if I never use a spine tool. Not awful, but by no means would I say that is good. If you are looking to access the spine tool, we're just gonna click this button in the top right here and you can see we've got this. When you open the spine tool, any node that you can actually manipulate with the spine tool is gonna to be on the left hand side here. On this sort of graph here, what I will show you with just the size transform, the horizontal axis is gonna be your keyframes. So as you can see, as we go across from the keyframe, let's just say it's 1800 all the way to 1900, we're going from, with the size transform, one up to two across those. What you can see by default, Fusion makes these transformations linear, as in it will go from one to two evenly spaced out across the selected keyframes that you put in. What the spine tool does is allows you to manipulate that so you can create much more fluid, much more engaging transitions for your video. The way we do that is super simple, guys. We can select these two points just by holding over them. And you can see now there's that green line there. I press control click to zoom in. And you've got this box here and this box here and the same for the other one. Now, the one that's rooted at the anchor of where you put that keyframe in, that means you can actually directly move the keyframe along from where you started without having to interact with the, the tools tab over here. So if you grab this point on the spine tool and I drag that back, that means it's actually gonna, it's gonna extend the length of that effect. So I'll just undo that really quick. The second point here that actually leads into the effect, that one will control the motion or the smoothness, the ramping, however you wanna frame it of the effect. So if I grab it and drag it down like this, and then I grab this other point and drag it up like this, what you're gonna see now is a slow build up into that zoom fast peak and then it's going to slow back down as it as it comes to the desired value that we set at the keyframe so if we watch it back this is remember this is just the size we can play with the angle Let's just let that render out punches in way quicker which is awesome it looks way way better so for me i want to eliminate these alpha channel in the background. What that means is that's just gonna shine through or for example that we have here, it'll just come up black, which won't look good at all. So what I've done with this spline tool, as I've selected this bottom one, as you can see, I've dragged this all the way across. That's basically just lengthening the amount of time that it's gonna to take to start zooming in. So that's a very slow build to the uh, increase in size here. So I'm gonna drag this up like this actually. And what you're gonna see is where it's gonna punch in way quicker way smoother it is going to be very very fast at the start I might change it a little bit more probably go back to that s so he goes nice and fast and peak this up here and we'll see how we go beautiful because now you can see as he goes through it's punching in much quicker and then sort of ramping up so as you watch that back every time, now it's gonna be much smoother. You can see as it comes towards the end of the ramp effect, it sort of eases in rather than just going solid motion, like a, rather than going on that linear motion than just stopping, it just doesn't look natural. That's not how things happen in real life. When you do this, it adds that little bit of realism, that little bit of fluidity to your transitions. That's really gonna up your game. And it can only be done through the spline tool. Next thing I want to manipulate, guys, is our angle. So it's the same deal, guys. So we've got the 360 degree here, and you can see the values on the left-hand side. All I've got to do is just grab this, grab this point, and I want this to be slow to start, doing a slow build on the spline as it moves across. I'm virtually eliminating that alpha channel. There's still a little bit there, but if you compare it to what it was, it's not even close. It just looks so much better. What I'll do is put these two side by side, guys. So here's it without the spline. And here's it with the spline. As you can see, you've got a much more fluid motion. It looks way better and it's just much, much cooler, much more engaging. When you've utilized the spline tool, create the effects. That is the magic of the spline tool, guys. It adds so much depth so much engagement, so much fluidity to your transitions, and it changes your transitions from looking like they've just been cut and paste from a preset pack 
you know, drag and drop transitions into something that you've built from the ground up custom for your clip, because that is essentially what you're doing. So it really just brings another level to your clips. So that's it guys, that is this simple, nice, short, sharp, tutorial on the spine tool. It's really, really easy, guys. It is something that you need to play around with a little bit just to get nice and used to so you can sort of develop what you want. Generally, a good S-curve on the spine tool is gonna give you nice transitions, but it does give you a lot of flexibility to play around to make sure that the transitions you're doing are gonna suit the clip. So I highly, highly recommend that you guys invest into the spine tool, learn Fusion a bit, and I promise you it is going to take your transitions and effects to the next level. I'll see you in the next one, guys. If you have gotten this far and this is useful to you, I would love it if you could subscribe. Comment below if you're using DaVinci Resolve if you're thinking of jumping over because I know a lot of people have seen the hype around it. I can say from someone who is an ex-Adobe user, I absolutely fucking love it. It works so much better on my computer. I find it's much more stable. The colors that I can get out of it, I don't know if it's just like the Lumut, I was just really shit and using the Lumetri panel or whatever it was on Premiere Pro, but I just find DaVinci Resolve is just so, so much better for videos. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.